without getting into you know in game strategy or anything. How much do you split up the time with meeting with the coaches versus meeting with the players? Do you address the players as a group? And does that kind of vary game to game? Or you guys have a, a set procedure for that? We have a set procedure, and uh, we meet as a coaching staff first. We meet as a uh, offensive staff, defensive staff, and then I. Excuse me, I travel in between there. You know, I meet with the offensive coaches first, and I go with the defensive staff. And then we meet with the players. You know, one of the things that's interesting in college football, the halftime is a lot longer than the NFL. So it took me a while to get used to that, because in the NFL, it's like bang, 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 and you're back. There's no bands. You know, there's no band. There's no time for the band when you're playing the Jets, you know. So, um, so but I love the band. That's not a shot at the band. I love the band, obviously. But, um, so, it, it, I think it's about a 20 minute halftime, I think. So basically, and, uh, and so that's what we try to do. And we make adjustments and we do those things. And look, at, at the end of the day, sometimes those, those adjustments work, and sometimes they don't. You know, it's, uh, it's a bunch of good kids and good coaches trying to do the right thing. You know, I, w I wouldn't make too much out of the second half thing. I mean, I know that's what, you know, maybe you guys are driving at, but, you know, we just, uh, we just need to coach it and play it better. Uh, hey, Bill. Um you know, when the season ends, uh, the transfer free agency stuff is going to kind of open up again. Have you and your staff really thought much about that, about that yet, or how you guys kind of plan to deal with that situation? Uh, I believe that every single day we, uh, we work very hard on our relationships with our players. We work very hard to uh, put our players in the best position to play on Saturdays. Um, we work very hard to come up with a, 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 as good a practice plan as we can. We, we care about our team, we care about our players, we, we, we care about their families, we care about their class schedules. Uh, so that's what we do every single day. So uh, do we have a strategy for whatever that is? I wouldn't say we have a strategy. We just uh, we, we, we try to go out there with this 2012 team and, and, and just have open lines of communication and coach them to the best of our ability and coach them to be well-rounded guys. That's what we do. And after your final two games, you would love a full stadium, especially the student section um, for your seniors. But I mean, I'm a student here, and I know a lot of kids are talking about just kind of going home and relaxing over break and not coming back for the game. Are you going to try to do anything to convince kids to come back for that Wisconsin game? Uh, I'm not going to sit up here and beg anybody to come to the game, but I'm going to tell them this, that, that uh, you know, again, this is a team that uh, has been through uh, unprecedented situations. <clears throat> this is a football team led by a senior class that has had the choice, had the choice, had a choice whether to stay at Penn State or to leave Penn State. And they chose to stay. And so as fans, as students, can we not choose to support them in their last two games, eight quarters of football? Uh, you know, I don't know. To me, that's, that's what I feel. I think this is a team that's poured its heart and soul into this season. We're not an undefeated team. Can't do anything about that now. We're, we've got two games left, starting with a very tough Indiana team. And uh, I would hope and, and, and just I would, I would expect that our, our students and our fans understand what this team has been through and what they did to commit to each other, to commit to this university, to stay together and come support them in their last two games, especially this senior class. Hey, Bill. Right. Um, given that McGloin's season, what do you think is in store for him like, after this season? Is he a guy who could have a job in some capacity in the NFL, even if he doesn't get drafted? Uh, you know, let's, let's focus on Indiana right now, you know, and then next week let's focus on Wisconsin, and maybe then after the season maybe ask me that question again, okay? Yeah. Uh, Bill, a couple quick ones, if you could. Uh, was your sideline warned at all before that that penalty? Has your sideline been warned this year? No. Uh, Matt, not available this week. You just figure it was a good time to give him a week away mm -hmm. from the media based on uh, maybe after the game? Does that have something to do with it? No, no. You know, I just uh, I choose what players to talk to the media every week, and I just chose for him not to be on that list. Okay, and one more. Hopefully, Brennan won't mind. Um, who? <laughs> oh, that gives me a hard time. Uh, so you talked about burying losses, and uh, was this one, because of the circumstances, uh, a little more difficult? Is your resiliency as a leader, you know, taxed through some of the disappointments? Uh, 
no, this, this, this uh, again, we've moved on to Indiana. We came out yesterday. We had a good meeting. We had a good team meeting. Um, one of the good things about our, our year this year is our schedule. I think the way we set up our schedule as a staff has been good. You know, we gave them Sunday off, you know, and uh, they can come in for treatments and maybe get a lift in, and then they come back Monday. So, you know, they have a chance to, to, to uh, you know, think about things in their own mind, and then when they come back on Monday, they seem to be refreshed. And uh, for the most part, every Monday they've come out and practiced well. So, um, you know, no, we 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 uh, we we're, we'll be ready to go for Indiana. We'll be ready to go. Hey, coach, hey, you always talk about the special senior class, and most attention obviously goes to the McGloin, Mounty, Hodges, those kind of guys. What can you say about the rest of those seniors? Even some guys, Shane McGrady is coming here to talk to us. A guy like that doesn't play much. What does he mean to this team? And guys like that. That's the that's the great thing about this class is you have. You know, a lot of guys like that, that that you guys never hear about. You know, the Shane McGregor's, um, the J.R. Refices, the you know these are these are very unique guys that uh, that come out to practice every week and are great students. And you know, you'll probably hear more about them after they graduate than than while they were here at Penn State. You know, uh, there's a bunch of guys like that. I mean, I go, I don't think he, I don't think we talk enough about Stank, our center, or, or, or Farrell, our tackle. I mean. These guys have played well for us. I don't think we, we I don't think we talk enough about Pete Massaro, what what he's going through. <coughs> Stephon Morris is one of the most improved corners in the Big Ten. You know, a lot of people doubted what, how good Stephon Morris was going to play this year. He's come out and had a hell of a year, and uh, you know, people people uh, I hope people take notice of that because uh, it is it's a great senior class of guys and um, guys that have poured their heart and soul into this into this team. So at the risk of beating a dead horse with the NFL stuff, yeah. you're in a unique situation after this season where players have decisions to make, recruits are looking. Do you feel at all the need to, to make a definitive statement on your future, uh, given the situation that your name's already been floated out there with some different teams? I don't read the, uh, you know, look, we're six and four. I'm, you know, I'm flattered that you'd even ask me that question. Uh, I'm worried about Indiana. I'm worried about our Tuesday practice. And uh, just looking forward to, to, to doing the best that we can for this team as a coaching staff for this Indiana game. Hey, Coach, the group that calls himself the Super Six, are you aware of them? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> what kind of camaraderie do they have? And do you ever like, group them in practice or anything also? Oh, no, I never. Yeah. <laughs> no. And um, how committed or how are you worried at all that they might make a move in the offseason because they're so young and talented? Yeah, no, I, you know, that's the second question. You know, you guys have asked me about being worried. I don't, I don't worry. You know what I worry about? I worry about my son. You know what I mean? I worry about my kids. I worry about my, my family. I, those are things to worry about. I, I don't worry about things that are, are, are out of our control. I will tell you this about that group of players. They have great camaraderie. I think they love playing for Penn State. Uh, I, I believe they, they understand the value of the education here at Penn State. They, they, uh, they know that, um, uh, whether it's offensive or defensive players in that group of guys, they know that their their talents will be showcased here to, 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 to play and and you know with good schemes on both sides of the ball. So you know I, I think those guys are committed to Penn State. You'd have to ask them. I was wondering if you could talk about Jim Bernhardt's role in the organization and is is he kind of like your version of Harvey? No, no, that's a bad comparison. Bears is a. That's a different role that he plays at, uh, at New England. But no, Jimmy, Jimmy uh, coached me in college, and uh, he's a guy that uh, he actually was instrumental in getting me my first break in coaching. He, uh, I was coaching at Brown, and uh, George O'Leary was the head coach at, jo at Georgia Tech, and, and Jimmy and George had gone way back. They're both from Long Island. So uh, George, George called Jimmy and said, listen, I need somebody – that's smart enough to get into Georgia Tech grad school, but dumb enough to want to coach. And Jimmy said, I got just a guy for you. So that was me. And so I went down to, to Georgia Tech, and Jimmy actually got me that job. So I owe a lot to Jimmy. He's, he's a great football mind. Uh, he's a behind the scenes guy here at Penn State. He's definitely uh, my right hand man. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I don't want to get into the details of his role because then I'd have to kill you, Nate. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, he's, uh, he's he plays a big role for us in our in our program. Do you do you have a Burge? Uh, yeah, I have two: <laughs> Jeff Nelson and Tony Mancuso. <laughs> hey, Bill. Uh, on your left, 
Um, you, you've stressed the importance of the future of the walk-on program here a couple times this season, but I'm just curious, um, without giving away too much about your future recruiting strategies, of course, um, how do you entice a player to become a walk-on for this program given the circumstances as opposed to taking a scholarship offer from another school? Well, we, we've actually, uh, you know, obviously I can't get into specifics, but we've, we've had a very good response to uh, guys that um, want to run on here. And, and, you know, obviously mostly Pennsylvania guys. You know, there's a lot of good football players in Pennsylvania that are good students that, uh, that, uh, that really, you know, grew up, like a Matt McGloin, that grew up wanting to play for Penn State and, uh, and, and were going to come here no matter what, you know, if they were uh, asked to be a, a run on here. So we, we feel like we've had a great response to that, and, and so hopefully that, that uh, bodes well for the future. Bill, no one's asked you about Indiana yet. What are your impressions of them as a football team? And when you see that they gave up 500 rushing yards to Wisconsin, does that change your game plan and maybe make you focus more on the ground game this week? We, we're, you know, again, uh, every week's different. So, um, you know, we, we just, we're going to do what we do. And, uh, but they're, to me, they're a good football team. I think Kevin's done a really good job there. Uh, defensively, they, they, they are sound. They have a, a good blitz scheme. Their two inside tackles are two of the better players we've, we've played this year at, that, at those positions. Uh, offensively, they run a very, very fast tempo. I mean, ultra fast. <clears throat> And they try to run between 90 and 100 plays in a game, so that's going to be a big, excuse me, big challenge for our defense uh, this week. And then uh, special teams. You know, we, we feel like we've got to really play well on special teams because they're going to come to play on special teams, and and we're, we're going to try to do the best we can to get an edge there. But uh, Kevin Wilson has done an excellent job of that program uh, from from where it was last year when he got there to where it is now. So it's going to be a tough tough game for us on Saturday. So we know you over here to your left. Right. Yep. Um, we know that you like keep, keeping the stars in the games for the most of the game, but you're talking about the senior class. Do you have any plans to maybe get a guy like Shane McGregor running his other seniors some more snaps um, with two games left in the season? Uh, you know, again, I uh, haven't really thought about that at this point. Uh, we're, number one thing is we're going to try to go out there and win the game. So we're, we're going to do the best we can to try to put our players in the best position to win, win the game first. Coach, can you talk about the development of your defensive ends as a group, as a whole, throughout the year? Yeah, I think that uh, that there's been a lot of improvement there, and and it's, a, it's it was a new scheme, so they had to learn how to play in a new scheme, and then it was uh, a little bit different blitz scheme than in the past, and a little bit different run gap control scheme. So I think every week uh, Larry's done a nice job with uh, with explaining the game plan and watching these guys improve. So I. I think that you know all of them have uh, unique abilities. They're not all the same. Some guys are better pass rushers than they are run guys. Some guys are better run guys than they are pass rushers. So uh, you know we try to use them in that way, and, and I think that's a, a unit that's improved. Well, in Indiana, you know they've given up a lot of yards, but they've got they've got the ability to get after the quarterback. Like third in the conference with sacks. Can yeah. Talk about you know you you got to be concerned about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, Indiana concerns me. I mean, they're they're a good football team. I mean, uh, yeah, they 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 have a good uh, they have a good pressure scheme. Like I said, they have two inside tackles that are that are excellent players, and uh, they they sack the quarterback. When you have two inside tackles that sack the quarterback, that that tells you right there that they're two good players because it's not easy to to rush the passer from those positions. So yeah, no, the, Indiana's a good football team, and. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to have a good week of practice and be ready to go on Saturday. And I, and I believe we will be. We'll be ready to go. Bill, Malcolm Willis is listed as day to day on the weekly injury report. Can you just provide an update on him? Did he practice yesterday? And what are the chances he plays on Saturday? Uh, that is a day to day. That's more like, um, you know, last week uh, with a couple of those guys. We'll have to see later in the week, you know, um, see how he does. He, he did some things yesterday, so we'll just have to see how he is later in the week.